<clears throat> we're going to talk about the common shoulder disorders. Uh, so we'll go through the uh, some basic uh, common conditions disorders of the shoulder. So the uh, shoulder uh, consists of uh, consists of uh, a ball and socket uh, joint. So the ball is the head of the uh, humerus, and the uh, socket is the uh, glenoid, which is part of the uh, scapula. Uh, it is a shallow uh, shallow bone. Uh, the, the, I mean, the, uh, the glenoid is uh, shallow uh, to allow for greater uh, motion. Uh, so, uh, as we mentioned with, with uh, before, uh, if you need more motion, you will compromise stability. Stability will be less uh, because of uh, uh, what's holding the joint uh, uh, is the ligaments and the cartilage and the uh, tendons rather than uh, the bone itself. So as you mentioned, the uh, humerus head and the glenoid, which part of the scapula, and uh, there are multiple uh, joints, attachment uh, to the glenoid, uh, acromion, and the coracoid, uh, all help to maintain the shoulder stability with allowing significant uh, motion. Uh, the acromion, which is a part of the uh, shoulder uh, girdle, uh, it has so many uh, attachment, so many uh, ligaments, uh, ligaments attached and to help the stability. And there are some types of the uh, acromion uh, with, with each uh, type you might have uh, some, uh, some pathologies, especially the uh, type three, which is a hooked. Uh, it will give you a, a narrow, uh, uh, narrow space for the tendons to pass through. So ten tendons pass in this, uh, in this canal. Uh, the roof of that canal is the uh, acromion. So if you have hooked acromion, there is a higher chance that there will be uh, pressure and uh, irritation to the, uh, to the uh, rotator cuff muscles or tendons of the, the rotator cuff uh, that passes through that uh, uh, subacromion uh, canal. The uh, glenohumeral joint, uh, which is... Uh, from the humerus and the glenoid. Uh, it has multiple ligaments, just to know that it has so many ligaments to hold it uh, in, a, in a stable position, as well as the rotator cuff muscles hold it in position and help in its stability. So stability of the uh, shoulder joint or the glenohumeral joint depends on the uh, ligaments, the cartilage in the glenoid, which is called the labrum, and the rotator cuff muscles. These are the stabilizers of the uh, shoulder uh, joint. Uh, so <clears throat> when we talk about the rotator cuff muscles, uh, as you mentioned, it is the main stabilizers, or the, uh, we call it dynamic stabilizers not like the ligaments, which is static stabilizers of the uh, joint. Uh, so one of them is the, uh, uh, I mean, the goal of, of uh, or the function of these muscles is to push uh, the humeral head uh, against the glenoid to allow for more uh, stability uh, while not preventing the uh, wide range of motion of that uh, very flexible joint. Uh, so we have four uh, rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. Each of, uh, each of one of them has a specific uh, function. Uh, it allows for uh, some motion, 
but their main uh, goal uh, is to stabilize the uh, joint and allow for the range of motion. We have also the deltoid, which is not, which is not part of the uh, rotator cuff. It's a, a huge, strongest muscle to allow for shoulder abduction mainly. Uh, also, we have pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, biceps, rhomboid, trabeus, uh, levator scapula, and serratus anterior. All these uh, muscles help in the uh, motion of the uh, of the shoulder joint, but they are not stabilizers. The stabilizers are the rotator uh, calf muscles. Subacromion bursa, which is as, as we mentioned before, it is uh, a canal and it has uh, a, a bursa, it has like a capsule uh, and it is between the acromion and the rotator calf tendons. It allows for smooth uh, motion uh, of the tendons of the rotator cuff. And as we mentioned before, if uh, the rotator cuff had, or the acromion has a type of hooked type, uh, might irritate the uh, rotator cuff uh, muscles. Uh, <clears throat> but the main, the main goal of this subacromion bursa is to have smooth, uh, is to allow for smooth motion uh, of the rotator cuff uh, tendons. Impingement syndrome, uh, it means that uh, in the subacromion bursa, there will be a narrowing of the subacromion space, uh, minimal predisposition uh, or predisposing factor, and they could end in a hook type uh, acromion. فيصير في impingement زي القرص على القرص على rotator cuff muscles and will cause pain for the patient and this is called impingement syndrome if left for long time might cause also rotator cuff تير يصير في قطع في التندنز نفسها اللي قرا يحك فيها أو يحك في بعض بسبب تضيق subacromial space uh, risk factors to have the uh, impingement syndrome, subacromial impingement syndrome, uh, age above 40, overhead activity, uh, bursitis in the subacromial bursa, and uh, supraspinatus, one of the muscles, tendinitis, if it has inflammation, acromion shape, type 2 and type 3, hooked acromion. Uh, arthritis in the AC joint as well, and osteophyte formation might result, all might result in uh, the impingement syndrome, which is narrowing of the subacromial uh, space and uh, will cause uh, some pain. As you can see here, this is the subacromial uh, bursa over the space. The tendon goes there. So if you have arthritis in the AC joint, you have uh, tendinitis in the uh, in the uh, rotator cuff, especially supraspinatus, hooked type uh, acromion. All these factors will continue to cause tightness in the subacromial space and uh, will cause uh, pain uh, and impingement. Especially when the patient raises up their arm, abduction or abduction they will have impingement of قرص على the supraspinatus uh, muscles. We ما ذكرنا ال risk factors. Right. Usually they have uh, the symptoms of patient present with the shoulder pain, inability to raise their arm having uh, difficulty with overhead activity uh, and uh, usually it happens in the, the age group as we mentioned uh, with continuous pain as we mentioned we can have true bursitis inflammation from the subacromial bursa or even rotator cuff tendinitis inflammation of the tendons of the rotator cuff uh, 
uh, when patients sleep o- over the affected side, they have pain, uh, pain worse at night, and the subacromium bursa become hyperemic, is it has sawail as a, any inflammatory process in the body. Uh, range of motion will be decreased, especially uh, abduction and overhead activity, and the patient will feel their shoulder is weaker. Uh, differential diagnosis, ممكن يكون rotator cuff tear, uh, calcific tendonitis, maybe تكلس في tendons حق rotator cuff, ولا uh, biceps tendonitis also. ممكن يكون cervical radiculopathy, ضغط في أحد الأعصاب من cervical disc and causing uh, pain at the same area. Uh, chronic clavicular arthritis, glenohumeral instability, degeneration of glenohumeral uh, joint or arthritis. Physical examination, there will be atrophy, يقل حجم ال rotator cuff لأنه ما فيها استعمال, patient cannot use it. Decreased range of motion, especially internal rotation and uh, adduction. Weakness, uh, pain, and uh, positive impingement test. Impingement test, كيف نقدر نفحص الimpingement? في عندنا near uh, impingement test or Hawkins impingement test. I'll show it to you. For the Hawkins, near, you, know, you just do uh, internal rotation. As you can see here, you start with the internal rotation and do uh, upward uh, uh, extension, and the patient will have the pain. Hawkins test, you do, uh, as you see here, internal rotation with abduction, and the patient will have severe pain at the site of the uh, burst. This is diagnostic for... Uh, impingement syndrome. X-ray, you can see some acromion spurs, some changes in the osteophyte and arthritis in the area. Uh, and MRI will uh, confirm the diagnosis and tell you if there is any bursitis in the subacromion area. And also will tell you the integrity of rotator cuff if there is any uh, tear in the rotator cuff tendon. This is some uh, impingement. So, because of the acromion, it's getting uh, downward, having osteophyte, it's hitting on the uh, head of the uh, humerus. This is to evaluate the shape of the acromion. So we can do uh, start with the conservative, uh, uh, which is uh, avoid the painful overhead activities, physiotherapy, stretching, range of motion, and exercise, strengthening of the rotator cuff, giving the patient non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory, and you can also add a uh, steroid injection for the acromion. The uh, steroid, as you know, is a very strong anti-inflammatory, so if the patient having like bursitis, tendonitis, all this will get better with the steroid injection. Operative treatment, the goal of surgery is, is to remove the impingement, meaning to see the subacromian space, so the rotator cuff muscles are going to be able to do the problems, to do decompression, subacromian decompression, and to increase the uh, space for the rotator cuff. Uh, the indication, usually if, if the conservative treatment fails for more than six months uh, and uh, <clears throat> acromioplasty can be done, وتوسيع القناة هذا هو الأساس وتعمل بالمنظار arthroscopically uh, it's called subacromian decompression it has high success rate. Uh, we go back to the rotator cuff, زي ما قلنا uh, muscles, for muscles, their main goal is to do uh, minimal uh, initiation of motion and mainly to, to have, uh, to stabilize, to stabilize the uh, shoulder. Uh, we mentioned this before. <clears throat> so their function mainly to uh, to keep the humeral head contained in the glenoid, so to add stability uh, with any arms position. Uh, by depressing the head of the humeral inside uh, the glenoid. Of course, it's the opposite of the deltoid. The deltoid is trying to 
الهيومرال هيد عشان الحركه بينما الروتيتر كاف ترايز تو كيب ذا شولدر اور ذا هيومرال هيد انسايد ريجولار وان تو افويد ذيس لوكيشن طبعا الكوز اوف ذا تير اوف ذا روتيتر كاف ماسلز ممكن يكون فاسكيا زي اسكيميا ديجنريتيف مع الوقت استعمال كثير آه في آه زي ما قلنا الامتنجمنت اللي ذكرناها قبل شوي السباكترومي الامتنجمنت از ون اوف ذا مين كوزز اوف روتيتر كاف تير ريبيتيتيف انجري في مكان ضيق تمشي فيها التندنس يحصل لها تير مع الوقت آه ممكن تحصل اكيوتلي تروما آه اذا كان مثلا فول اور تراينج تو كاتش هيفي اوبجكت فولينج داون history طبعا physical examination and x-ray uh, طبعا it has a very wide spectrum of, of condition ممكن يكون single tear في و... طبعا هنا اربع مصلز عندنا ممكن يكون one of them is injured or uh, more than one قد يكون التير uh, say, uh, partial or complete small or uh, large uh, ممكن يكون massive معناته انه uh, cannot be uh, repaired The treatment again, we start with non-operative, uh, the same as the uh, the uh, sub uh, condition. If no improvement after six months, usually we advise for surgical repair, either open or arthroscopic, as indicated. We don't wait, want to wait a very long time. Then it's a tear, how they say, massive tear. We mean that it's a very long time. اما في حالات التروما ان واحد طاح صار عنده تير اكيوتلي ذا انديكيشن از فور اميديت سيرجيكال انترفنشن راذر ذان تو ويت فور لونج تايم. طبعا اف نوت تريتد يؤدي الى زي ما قلنا ماسيف تير وكمبليت لوس اوف روتيتر كاف تير. Uh, surgery is uh, usually successful, but as, as uh, some people will not improve after surgery and they might have some stiffness, there is a yeah, small chance uh, of this happening. We come to uh, another condition called adhesive uh, capsulitis or frozen shoulder. This is capsule of the shoulder. We see adhesions, we see stiffness. Uh, it will uh, decrease the range of motion uh, of the shoulder. Uh, usually, it is self-limiting. It takes uh, time. Uh, it become, begins gradually, worsen over time, and then resolve. But this cycle might take a long time, up to two years. But usually, within six months, most of the patient will have it resolved. So start with st pain, then stiffness, then start to become uh range of motion comes back gradually and then uh, it resolves by itself a uh, risk factor diabetes uh malate, especially insulin dependence so type one uh hypo and hyperthyroidism uh, might happen after surgery or trauma uh, and high uh, cholesterol all these are risk factor for developing uh, an adhesive capsulitis or frozen Uh, shoulder condition. Clinical examination, usually by exam, you can see the stiffness happening in the patient. Uh, MRI and X-ray just to make sure that you're not missing any other uh, pathology, but usually clinical will show you the, the uh, give you the picture of frozen uh, shoulder. Stages, as, you, as, we, uh, as you mentioned, the stages start with pain. It's called, called the freezing stage, so patient having continuous pain, This is probably from the inflammation that happening happening in the capsule. Then it becomes very stiff. Uh, we call it the frozen stage. So there is no pain, but there is significant uh, uh, stiffness and decreased range of motion. And the uh, thawing stage, or a resolution stage. This cycle might might take up to two years, but usually six months. Uh, to eight months it resolved. So it will uh, resolve by itself. 
but we can do things to speed up and help the patient function. So we advise for physiotherapy to regain a range of motion. Uh, so if there is pain, we might advise for uh, painkillers, anti-inflammatory steroid injection uh, that decrease the pain. Uh, manipulation and anesthesia, so we forceful range of motion while the patient is uh, sleeping or under anesthesia to stretch the capsule. Uh, in very uh, limited cases, we need to do capsule release or do it surgically. Uh, we do release of the capsule. We come to the uh, last condition in the shoulder, which is uh, dislocation of the shoulder. Most of dislocation happens uh, anteriorly. Uh, around 95% of cases uh, will have anterior dislocation. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, anteriorly, uh, anterior dislocation most commonly, uh, around 95% of, of uh, dislocations happens uh, anteriorly. Posterior dislocation, which is less likely, it's around 5%. Uh, true inferior dislocation uh, occurs uh, around less than 1%. Uh, habitual dislocation, meaning patient having uh, ligamentous laxity and they can pop in, pop out their shoulder. Uh, it's non-traumatic and uh, multi-directional. Uh, and it is painless and caused by generalized ligamentous laxity. Mechanism of injury of anterior shoulder dislocation, uh, usually indirect fall uh, on uh, AB ducted or and extended shoulder. So if the shoulder is uh, out, abducted and extended, and the patient has a forceful, uh, forceful uh, external rotation, the, there will be anterior dislocation Rarely might be caused by uh, a blow from behind the shoulder, darba, ala al posterior, uh, posterior uh, type uh, side of the uh, shoulder might give you anterior dislocation, but usually indirect. We mean that no, see if the arm is extended, زي مثلا واحد تخيل واحد مثلا بيضرب كرة طائرة مثلا راح يدا فوق بيضربها then had uh, someone push their hand backwards more. Then the uh, the shoulder will pop anteriorly, or patient falls uh, on their shoulder. يعني يكون الضربة على الالبو والفور آر، but it forceful uh, backward of the shoulder. Uh, anterior dislocation. It is usually uh, anterior inferior, not pure uh, anterior, so it goes down a little bit. Uh, when you have uh, an anterior dislocation, uh, you most likely will get a Bankart lesion. Bankart lesion is an injury to the uh, glenoid cartilage. And if you cartilage dual glenoid, which is the socket, this is the ball. When you have a dislocation, you have a cut of the ball, and you have a cut of the ball. Uh, well, this is called Bankert lesion. Clinical picture, patient comes uh, usually in severe pain and uh, usually holds the uh, injured limb uh, with other hand close to the trunk. The shoulder is abducted and elbow is kept in flexion. There is loss of normal contour of the shoulder. I will show you. So you can see the shoulder because of the anterior dislocation, anterior inferior dislocation, the contour of the normal shoulder is lost, as you can see here. And there might be a step. Uh, you might feel the anterior uh, bulge here in this area, the shoulder. Uh, and there will be a gap above the dislocated head of the humerus. You can see a difference between the two. So you can see how flat this area and how the contour of the head is deep. X-ray will show you the anterior dislocation of the shoulder. 
uh, you can see it inferiorly going down and uh, anteriorly, so it will not show uh, a normal contour. Uh, there'll be some associated injury, very common with this location, is the axillary nerve. So axillary nerve is the most, uh, most, uh, mostly, uh, most commonly uh, injured nerve with the anterior uh, shoulder dislocation. And uh, uh, usually it is temporary and called neuropraxia. Might also be associated with a fracture of the humeral head or the uh, glenoid. As you can see at this location, this is the glenoid. This is a normal location of the head. It's going all the way down with a fracture of the, as you can see here, part of the head is fractured. This is the anatomy of the uh, axillary nerve. That's why with this location, there will be a stretch of the axillary nerve and might cause injury. Another clinical picture, you can see this location. So this is the, uh, where the axillary nerve supplies the sensation. So it's very important to examine the lateral edge of the, uh, of the shoulder to assess for loss of sensation. So if you, if you lose uh, the sensation in this area, that means that the axillary nerve is affected. So this is the uh, area where the uh, axillary nerve supply the uh, skin for sensation. So how would you manage an anterior shoulder dislocation? It is an emergency. So any dislocated joint should be reduced immediately. Uh, should be ideally should be less than uh, 24 hours. If it's left for more than that, there is a high chance that you will have a necrosis, uh, we call it avascular necrosis of the head of the humerus, meaning uh, the, the pain will, uh, the blood supply because of this location is not reaching the head. So the head will resolve uh, called the avascular necrosis and will cause multiple problems in the future. And most likely patients will need uh, multiple surgeries and uh, most likely will not regain uh, their function in the shoulder. Uh, so after you do the reduction, should be immobilized uh, for uh, with uh, with a strap and uh, and a cuff and a collar for at least uh, three uh, three weeks. Then you start range of motion and physiotherapy to regain uh, the motion. But after reduction, you have to make sure that you reduce the fracture uh, properly by doing the X-rays and make sure that you're not missing the uh, reduction. There are uh, many uh, methods for reduction. Uh, it's better to give a patient a little bit of sedation. Uh, and there is the uh, Hippocrates uh, method, Simpson and Coker, uh, multiple techniques. Uh, but this is the most common, uh, the, the uh, Hippocrates uh, method. Uh, but usually if you do just uh, traction while the patient is lying down, the uh, shoulder will go back into uh, position. This is the Simpson uh, technique. Also, you apply a weight, patient prone on the side of the bed and wait for the shoulder to uh, come back. This is the Coker technique. Do traction, external rotation, then a forceful uh, adduction. As you mentioned, the complication uh, axillary nerve injury, a fracture of the neck or the head of the, uh, of the humerus. Evascular necrosis, if, if vascular necrosis, if there is delay and reduction, might cause evascular necrosis. So a reduction should be uh, as soon as, as possible, either in ER or if it does not uh, reduce, you should take the patient for uh, general anesthesia and muscle relaxants, so you can do a proper reduction. Uh, one, one more thing, so one of the complications is recurrence. 
So shoulder dislocation, the problem with anterior shoulder dislocation, reduction is easy. Patient will regain a range of motion, muscle power, everything is fine. But they have one problem, is that uh, sometimes they will have recurrent dislocation. And you might hear it, uh, that uh, someone had a shoulder problem or a dislocation, and continuously having uh, a recurrent dislocation with any even simple uh, motion, they will have recurrent dislocation. So how would you uh, uh, anticipate the recurrence rate? So it all depends on the age of the patient. So if the first dislocation happens before the age of 18, the, the chance of having a recurrent shoulder dislocation is more than 90%. Okay? As the patient go, uh, gets older, this uh, percentage goes down. طبعا نتكلم على ال age of the first dislocation واضح؟ so first dislocation uh, so what depends or what determines the rate of recurrence dislocation or recurrent dislocation is the age of the patient when they had their first dislocation كل ما كبر المريض او up to يعني ال age of 35 there will be a most likely no uh, very minimal uh, recurrent uh, recurrent uh, dislocation for this patient. But uh, if the patient above or below uh, 18 or 20, uh, there is a very, very high chance, up to 90%, that they will develop a condition called chronic uh, anterior instability and recurrent uh, dislocation. Okay, any questions? Any questions for the uh, for all the uh, three lectures or uh, or the la last week lectures? Please, if you have any questions, this is my uh, email. Uh,